There we go. Yeah. We are now live on Zoom and on Facebook. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I'm well, my phone, my computer is now talking to me. <laughs> okay, cool. I think we're good. Great. Awesome. Nice job, dude. <laughs> So many things. The computer is like talking to me while I'm talking to you, and then we're just having a party. That's just how this this is going. <laughs> Anyways, we're talking about um, entrepreneurial. Oh uh, yes. So I literally want to start um, a drinking game. As somebody who doesn't really drink, right. um, I'm lit I've literally had a glass of kombucha in a wine glass. <laughs> um, Fancy lady. Up, I mean living the dream, living the dream. Um, but I, um, yeah, I want to start a drinking game that for anybody who says, was it the word pivot or the words mindset? Because oh. it's all about mindset at the moment, right? As we struggle through coronavirus <laughs> life. Um, and it's, and the other word is, you know, I'm an entrepreneur and mentorship. Oh, yes. I have literally, I can't remember the amount of conversations I've lost track of the amount of conversations I've had with people where they're like, so what are you, what did you do today? They're like, oh, you know, mentorship. I'm like, yeah, I hella pivoted. Yeah. I pivoted my business and I'm a mentor about everything. And I'm like, cool. <laughs> totally. I can, I can dance. <laughs> Is this like. The chest robot? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But as, 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 anyways, back to the, back to the, back to the point of this whole conversation. Um, as musicians, I don't know, I'm finding it, you know, when, when I'm surrounded by all these um, people telling us, you know, you need to pivot your business. You need, all I know is music. Yeah. Okay. I worked in radio. Okay, I used to work, you know, like I said, I, I wanted to be a mechanic for a while. Um, I worked as a travel agent for a little bit. No one's fucking Right, travel. right. That's, <laughs> that's not going to work. Don't pivot to that. No. So, um, yeah, I guess uh, having a chat about, like, what is it like for a musician or an entrepreneur? Drink? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> To um, you know, to pivot in the face of COVID, um, and and I'm really grateful because like a lot of the people that I do spend a lot of time with are musicians and are people who think on their feet um, and have managed to figure out a way to maintain some kind of forward motion. Yeah forward through this yes um but it's weird yeah yeah yes it is it's very weird it's surreal um it's electric you know which yeah, yeah. is it hovers and that could be anxiety and creativity you know like whatever this gesture is yeah. that, that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's happening and you know you can go one way or another with it kind of you know yeah both at the same time whatever i mean i i always deal in dialectics and emotions like you know the venn diagram that's mm. my, that's my whole world it's like helping helping people to instead of push things to black or white learn to live with the unknown and the anxiety that comes with gray because it's mm gray everything's gray black and white that's made up so like learn to do gray yeah <laughs> you know but people grow up learning almost nothing about their own emotional world but yeah everybody thinks that one emotion happens at a time and right now boo you know like everything's oh. yeah hammer fists and people, <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> and people don't even know how to do the one at a time thing much less four at a time you know yeah. 
And so they're like losing their shit, understandably, because where would they have learned? Right. Nobody teaches you that. Well, so that's that's part of like why I'm excited about why I'm excited about now. As weird and fucked up as that sounds, um, I think it's a really beautiful, needed, necessary challenge that we're going through to like be able to recognize, oh, it's okay to be stupidly happy because I don't know, my housemate cleaned the dishes. Yeah. Um, as well as feeling really anxious because I don't know what's going to happen. What's going to happen tomorrow? And so I was, um, you'll laugh at this. I was watching a Tony Robbins video this morning. No! <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm going to try. Only because, okay, only because um, there were some really nice nuggets in what he was saying. Sure. I'm always. a nugget finder. I'm a nugget finder. <laughs> always. Always. Um, and there were some really good nuggets. And one of the nuggets was um, the differences between focusing on your past compared to focusing on your present compared to focusing on your future. You're, you're shaking your head. Talk, talk to me, Jay. <laughs> well, it's, it's just that saying really basic shit in psychology, like that's like, that's like kindergarten in the world of psychology. Oh, I know. You know, like like saying it really loud as a big tall man on a stage suddenly gives that shit value and it has value i'm not saying it doesn't have value i'm saying that that has been said everywhere in the world of psychology Except that we're noticing okay so i'm not defending i, I totally agree with you but i do find it fascinating that we are still like as yeah. we're watching, people need this. People yes, need it's, true. It's, it's an ongoing thing. And you, like, I don't, I usually have a board, but my spiel on the past, present, future thing, I, oh, this is all I have right now. It's an envelope in front of me. Okay. But it's a, mind, it. it's a mindfulness technique. Okay. Right. So mm -hmm. future, past, present. Get it? Yes. Okay. So mindfulness is all about like, whether you're spending time in the past or the future, you are attempting to bring your mind back yeah. to the present moment because that's all there is, right? Right. That's the reality. That's the gray I was talking about before. Right. And actually, if you do the this, present is this, always is gray. Venn, this is the Venn diagram also. Uh huh. Um, but that's the dialogue. I love it. Okay. So if you spend too much time in the past in an unbalanced way, what do you imagine is the emotion you're going to feel the most? Resentment, sadness. Yep. Yep. Um, it's usually some sort of regret, sadness, regret. blend yeah. kind of thing. And yeah. then, so if you spend an unbalanced amount of time in the future, what are you going to feel? Anxiety. Totally. Fear, fear, fear. Tons of fear. So, so mindfulness is... Bringing your mind, no matter how many times you catch yourself in the past or the future, let's use future now, because that's what okay. people are flipping their shit about. So <laughs> they're living here in the hovering of anxiety all the time, right? right? So, right. Here. so mindfulness is just, you know, noticing that you do that, bringing your mind back to the present, because that's all there is. But the beautiful thing about what a statement that everyone understands when they hear it Mm -hmm. very few people practice it is when you do that when you bring your mind back to the present you are eliminating the stimulus for fear okay in the I present see. there's no need to be afraid because the present is all there is right i'm not saying like blindly don't plan for the future i'm saying mindfully in the present plan for your future from a calm brain. And if you start sliding over here while you're planning, then bring your mind back to the present again Word. so that you can get to the calm emotion regulation, your baseline, yeah. and then you're going to be a better planner, more efficient anyway, with a calm 100%. brain. 
hundred percent. Right. I've been finding that with a lot of my um yeah, because like even with songwriting, like I'm like, I need to do this. Right. I need to like do this show tonight online. I need to like learn all these things. I've got like three courses I'm doing at the moment and I'm so behind in every single one of them. <laughs> and I need to do my vocal warm-ups and I need to like call my five best friends and then five people that I haven't talked to. Like get back to the prison girl. <laughs> right, right, right. And um it's yeah. That's a lot of shoulds, my dear. A lot of shoulds. Shoulds. Yeah, and so I, it, it's, I don't know. I, I, I then keep reminding myself, like, Emma, you literally write songs about this. Like, and you overcome me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I talk to myself as if I'm a third person because I'm my best friend, whatever. But, <laughs> um, but being able to then, like, I don't know. The, the only time that I find it's healthy to look at my past is to, A, build gratitude. Like, yes. I've done some pretty dope stuff yeah. for someone of my age yes. and of my color and of my gender. Yes, totally. <laughs> um. And then, and then having having gratitude for that, but also being able to be like, I moved to this country with a hiking bag, yeah, right, and five hundred dollars in my account, New Zealand, right, right. I'm not saying don't look at the past. Like you're looking at the past from the present as yeah. a way to problem solve and kind of coach yourself you're using it to problem solve fear that's what i'm trying to do <laughs> and it sounds like that works a lot of the time actually uh, yeah it's still hard though to like honestly it's still hard to um kind of make sense of it and you know, like realistically, my family is either in Los Angeles, Iowa, or New Zealand. Hmm. Um, and so like, I can look at those parts of myself and be like, okay, I've done this much. Is that, am I just like, am I just lucky now? Like, and then what do I do with that now? You know, this, this, the other, the other, okay, the other word that we can drink on, uh -huh. unprecedented. There we go. <laughs> and these, unprecedented times. times yeah right right um being able to then figure out like okay how is it that I can get my music out there how is it that I can connect with people how is it that I can help alleviate that fear in other people when I'm feeling super anxious myself when I don't know you know I can't go busking now right yeah um no one's really sure when the next paycheck is coming in how they're gonna make that i don't there's just so many questions <laughs> no. like so that that's so I'm, I'm balancing between super anxious and then super like ben emma like you've come so far already we good God will look you know, after you. <laughs> you know what makes that work better? Is if before the problem solving, which you, you're coaching about your past, that's mm -hmm. problem solving in this Venn diagram. Right. First, first has to come the validation of the emotion you're experiencing. When you when you notice that your mind is just barrel, 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 all these worry thoughts are just plowing through. And you have to ask yourself, instead of believing all those, yikes, you have to ask yourself, what am I feeling right now that's generating all these worry thoughts? And if it's fear or some word, anxious, fearful, apprehensive, panic, yeah. terrified, you know, like go Google a list of fear words so you can get at what it, the more specific, the better. But just saying, I feel scared right now has an impact on the experience of scared and brings you just a little closer to baseline people okay. people don't know that they think that to admit it means it's going to spike but the opposite is actually true is that because you like you kind of make friends with it a little bit there's an acceptance piece to it for sure right the validation is like meeting yourself where you are 
and then you can problem solve. If you problem solve first, then you're kind of invalidating the emotion. Plus, you don't really know what is the most effective one for the emotion you're feeling because you didn't name it yet. Right. Like I'm you might call it fear because it feels like fear in right. your chest, but you might be pissed off and stuffing it. And that's why your fear has spiked. Let, I mean, your anxiety will spike if you stuff anger. So all these pieces, these moving parts, identifying the emotion, yeah, validate it, then problem solve. I think my bad habit, I don't know if this is a bad habit or not, like I skim so quickly over here laughing at me like, I'm already oh, yeah, Okay, cool, here we go. Yeah. Um, I think part of it is like, okay, real talk. We all know that I've had brain surgery, whatever. Yeah. Okay. That, you didn't know that? Okay, I have a condition called hydrocephalus. Sorry, I talk about this all the time, so I kind of assume that people know. Um, I've got a, a condition called hydrocephalus, um, which means I have a cyst in the middle of my brain. Your brain floats in water, water goes into your head and drains down your spinal column, but the cyst in my head doesn't have anywhere to go. Sorry, the, the water in my head doesn't have anywhere to go because it just blocks it. So I have this tube in my neck, which oh. I don't know if you can see it. My camera's pretty shit. Um, but um, so I've had 10 brain surgeries and 23 surgeries in total. Holy shit. Um, so like that's part of where I think my resilience comes from. But I've yeah. also like, I've done the whole, you know, been suicidal. I lost friends to suicide. Yeah. Um, I was homeless for a while because rightfully so I brought it on myself. Um, I was a drug addict, like there, I've been through some, some stuff. Mm -hmm. And so through all, but through all of that, those experiences, I've kind of, my defense, my defense mechanism yeah. has been turning every negative into something positive. Okay. So I don't even like, I don't necessarily even have time to be like, oh, hey, anger, what's up? Right. <laughs> like, let's hang out, let's do lunch. <laughs> Cause I just like, I, I don't have time for you. I'm gonna like turn that anger into a song and then I'm gonna make friends with you in the song and then be like, yeah, but I'm taking your anger seeds. I'm planting a garden. We're gonna like, you know, whatever, uh, fertilize it with some bullshit. <laughs> so what, what do you fear will happen if you address your anger? I don't know. Cause you're, your it's not gonna kill you. But your what you're saying that racing along sounds like a fear mortality thing. On to the next, on to the, I don't have time for that. Uh, right. But it creates a raciness where you might miss some of the present. Which is why I need to meditate more and I need to run more. So I've been, my, my way of dealing with things at the moment has been like literally throwing myself into a fuckload of cardio. So that I can sort of the same. Uh, is it? Cause no, because it clears my head. It like helps me, helps me kind of um understand. Like it gives me time to think. Sure. And I am so for cardio. I'm so for exercise, definitely, definitely. And when unbalanced, it can literally become a metaphor like you're running away from emotion not you yeah. a person okay. 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 I feel now, that's not defined by me you have to find that line for yourself as everyone does that's not defined by me yeah it's just you if you take a look and you're like is this balanced or unbalanced like is there an emotion that i didn't want to do today and you know a lot of times women in particular are socialized to not do the anger thing there are healthy ways to do anger it doesn't make you an asshole you know like especially when <laughs> anger is the emotion that tells us our boundaries are being crossed which is really kind of important as a woman you know yeah no you're right i mean i'm really good at getting angry i'm really good at getting angry okay um, <laughs> as i discovered in my last relationship <laughs> in a way that um, matches your values sorry are you when you say you're good at getting angry does that mean behaving in a way that matches your values? oh yeah 
Okay. I don't I don't yell. I'm I'm somebody that's like, hey, um, this is how you I'm I'm a, I'm a queen of of I feel statements. Like oh. when you do this, it makes me feel like this. <laughs> make you feel what? I feel this type of way about this type of situation. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, so I, I you know, I um yeah. It's uh but you're, you're probably right. I, I, you know, that that experience for the last like year and a half of my life, very much did, invalidated my anger. Okay. So maybe, yeah, maybe I should just make friends with the anger again. Well, if you if you want to, I don't know. You know, like I, I don't know what your relationship with anger is. I, I have another little um, fun exercise. <laughs> oh, I love exercises. It's okay. This is running. one. This is one. Um, that this sentence came up a lot when I was doing couples therapy, which ugh, puke, that sucks. Couples therapy sucks. You can fight at home for free. Um, yeah. and why did you come so late? Like I I'm good, but like, I can't put a bandaid on a river of blood. You know what I'm saying? Like get yeah. out of it. But, um, yeah. okay. <laughs> you writing me like a, this is a sentence in, to, a demonstrate, to demonstrate how shrinks teach people to say I feel statements in the most ineffective way. Okay, can you read that? I feel oh, yeah. like you're an asshole. Okay? okay, so here's the thing is like an asshole is not a feeling, A. <laughs> B, if you can put the word think and replace it with feel and the sentence still works, it's a thought, not a feeling. Here's the tip off. When the words that follow the word feel are like or that, it's a thought, not a feeling. Right. The very next word that comes after the word feel has to be happy, sad, angry, unemotion word. Right. Shrinks are the fault of this. Interesting. I feel like you're not listening to me. Not a feeling. That's a thought. And it because it's a thought, we don't automatically validate it because that shit might not be true. That's just your motherfucking opinion. And <laughs> usually it's a judgment, which means a projected piece of anger. That's yours, not mine. No, thank you. Yo, we're also with JJ Kelly, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if I was to say I'm feeling angry. It would just be like, I'm, I'm feeling angry because. Yeah, totally. And then you can say whatever you, because of what you did or right. please stop doing what's making me angry. But right. if you say something like, I feel like you're being aggressive right now. That's not owning your anger. That's making a judgment and an assumption about the other person's nice. intentions, which you can't do without them confirming that you're right. Right. You know what I'm saying? I get, I feel like you're attacking me right now. I've heard that a million times. Anytime I challenge somebody with like, that's fragile. Oh, you, I feel like you're attacking me. Well, um, I'm the one that defines whether I attack. Yeah. So if you think I'm attacking you, how would that make you feel? Like you can piece it apart in a productive way with somebody that doesn't have the language down yet for sure for sure i like that so um my way of i guess internalizing this current situation so i'm feeling how am i feeling i'm feeling vulnerable because of how this pandemic is not just um, influencing my environment, but the environment of the people I love. Yes. And the people who love me. Um, and I want to feel um, empowered to make a difference. Okay. Okay, so then the, that's awesome, by the way. Okay. Vulnerability is such a, like, 
there's vulnerability even in even saying you feel vulnerable that's like that's next level shit right there which awesome that i think that shows strength in a person that can say that um and so then if you feel vulnerable and you want to be empowered then you can get at what's in between what can you do with your vulnerability in line with your values that's going to lead to empowerment and then you guess and do the guess mm. and that shit may or may not go the way you wanted it to outcome is not as important because that's a crap journey <laughs> it's just a crap shoot anyway it's a guess you know like we're all like oh i'm gonna do this well maybe you will maybe you won't the future's not here yet so we'll yeah, see yeah, yeah. Take yeah. A shot. totally okay okay it will probably make you feel empowered to continue to create in whatever ways that's you what i've been doing i've well, been right I've, yeah yeah and writing. if you keep your your anxiety and fear at a tolerable level then creativity can flow so it's funny that you say that because i don't know if you saw this i posted it the other day a friend of mine um released his like he does a, a weekly motivational hit video on youtube okay. um and his his quote was uh along the lines of you can't be negative and creative at the same time Mm. And I, I like. Stop trying that effect. Sorry, I, 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 I like that because I'm like I can't. You, to, for me, even when I'm feeling super down and super depressed and super anxious or whatever, um, creative being creative helps me process. Yes. That and create a positive output. Yeah. That's how I read that, anyways. Um, so I know that that that's. I think that I, just me I that. think fear shuts the door of creativity to some degree. It can yeah. you know, like deer in headlights and just kind of be overwhelmed and paralyzed. Yeah. Um, that's a tough one because, you know, you write songs about being pissed off or you write songs about not you, but people, you know, and I, I guess- I have songs about being pissed off. Right. So <laughs> that's- Few months. <laughs> is that negative? I don't know. I mean, but yeah, I mean, generally a calm brain works better. Yeah. So even if you're writing about anger, you're like emotionally re regulated while you're writing about it. Right. So what are your, what are your ways in, in making friends with anger, frustration, anxiety? It's easy for me because I grew up in a family that was cool with anger, but not fear. Like we all grew up in a family that oh, encourages okay. certain emotions and discourages others. Irish Midwest, like that's all about anger, like seems strong or whatever. So I'm coming from here and someone else might be, we're both going toward the middle, but anger's easy for me. Like right. fear is hard for me to access. But I just say okay. when I'm when I'm angry and I'm perfectly okay with that. It, the problem is being a woman, you know, I've had men in many, many professional situations. You know, JJ, when you get angry, um, I want to crawl under a rock and hide. And I'm like, well, maybe you should do that then. Like, what responsibility do you think I have for that, sir? Like, I get that it's an attempt to modify my behavior, but if you just did something sexist, the appropriate response from me is anger. Yeah. So you want me to change what I'm doing. Huh, funny thing is, I want you to change what you're doing. That's funny. So what are we gonna do about that? That's funny. You're fake, you're like you're gaslighting me that it's my responsibility to change. Oh, I disagree. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I had a guy. Um, he commented on my. I don't know if you, if I've. I don't know if you've heard this song. Uh, it was my first, no, my second single, "Soul Take a Shot," that I wrote about a producer who tried to sign me in exchange for naked pictures. Okay. Um, and so I wrote this song, basically, and the chorus is, "I'm somebody's daughter. I'm somebody's child." Oh yeah, yes, I do. Yeah, I, I, I thought you'd heard it. Um, and somebody on YouTube was like, "It's really hard to get down with like." 
down with a song like you're really sexy and all that and like you just it's, it's such a buzzkill when you say that you're somebody's daughter I'm like <laughs> then I'm sorry stop. that <laughs> hi sorry, I'm not giving you stranger everything you want that's life bruh like for real <laughs> good luck coping how about you just cope jesus you're not being the perfect sex symbol for me right now yeah sorry you're talking about your feelings about how me objectifying you makes you feel right. Much right. <laughs> well objectifying me yeah totally 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 <laughs> totally and that's kind of why everything somebody says you know you kind of got to be like okay well that's probably more about you than me i call that water off a duck's ass like, <laughs> I'm just gonna I let it slide right off me because it's not about me nothing none of your shit's gonna stick to me whatever that's one of the things i've had to really i didn't realize until literally this moment that i've had to really work for is i'm uh, not taking other people's crap especially because being being a musician being a street performer um it's amazing how many people are like even just walking through a fucking supermarket you're like, hi. They're like, hi, can I tell you about my yeah. dying child and my tax problem? You know, like I've legitimately had conversations with complete strangers. Welcome. Because they're like, you're somebody I can talk to. Let me tell you, which is fine. I love that. But I also need to be like, that that's not my like yeah. I will, I will, I will hold you for the five minutes we're having this conversation, and then I need to like sing that's singing. not my story that's not my <laughs> <laughs> well try try being a friggin' psychologist at a party like a decade ago people are like oh what do you do you know it's the first fucking thing people ask what do you do 10 years ago i stopped saying it i was like i'm a singer and i am actually but i know, um, I know yeah. this <laughs> but but I'm not saying psychologists because two, they do one of two things. One, they either trap me and try to tell me all of their problems for free, by the way, at a party, not fun for me. Or they, ugh, they wait till other people come around. They're like, hey, don't tell her anything. You know, she's analyzing everything you say. Ugh. I get the opposite. I get people saying, don't like, don't tell her anything. Don't piss her off. Don't um don't date her for two reasons one she'll write a song about it or two she'll punch you and have you seen her right hook she's vicious bro because you know i fight or used to fight you know um <laughs> people are silly <laughs> it's their shit, right it's theirs right but the way that people just impose themselves on you if you're an empath you know that's basically yeah. the bottom line. Correct. So that's why I'm friends with anger because anger tells me when my boundaries are being crossed. And then I can be like, you know what? I'm not down with doing your emotional labor at mm -hmm. a party for free. Mm -hmm. You didn't even walk up to me with a drink in your hand for me. Mm -hmm. What the hell is wrong with you? Yeah, like, for real. For real. Take, 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 take. Mm -mm. It's it's interesting. I don't know. It's I I feel like ah <laughs> sorry. I think that <laughs> damn, okay. Awesome. Mm. <laughs> you it. That's awesome. Yes, quick study. This is a quick study, folks. <laughs> uh, there's there's definitely an imbalance in Western societies where there's far more take than there is give. And, and yeah. that's one of the things I'm seeing is changing during this coronavirus pandemic. That's what I was gonna say. Yes, totally, totally, totally. Um, up until you know three four weeks ago i did not know my neighbors names they had no idea who i was um all i knew that was that some random chick 
with a weird accent was running past the house every day. <laughs> <laughs> maybe she lives here the weird music sorry maybe she lives here i don't know I, yeah. I, I don't know. um whereas yeah like these days you know my neighbor um legitimately just like brought me some eggs the other day oh that is so like hey you know got you something from the store here you go Aww. i was like cool that's awesome you know like um I've been doing every Friday or tomorrow, it'll be tomorrow for, for this week, but um, I've been doing shows on my front porch and then my neighbors come and like take videos and they take, you know, like there's, there's just Very a lot fun. more outpouring of community and love. So um, it's been, I don't know, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to focus on that, those nuggets of okay. just hope and love. Mm -hmm. and gratitude and those and gratitude. are natural anti-anxieties by the way that yeah. is natural anti-anxiety drug yeah yeah preach and if preach. you can feel it it doesn't if you don't believe me try it you know like that shit does you feeling joy and gratitude like that for real it's like it glows and and makes no room for the anxiety it just like expands inside and like evicts the anger and the fear like those what are those like um what are those like grower insert oh yeah like the brain yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah i love it yeah things like that that's funny yeah. um <laughs> totally totally no, that's cool okay so make friends with anger Ride it out, like yeah. do nothing. And I mean, intense yeah. emotions only last a few seconds. It'll be, it'll pass. What were you gonna say? I find it really hard to be angry. Like I'm good at it, but I like, it, it needs to be, I, I'm, I'm very like, I'm a very all or nothing person. I know, surprising. Uh, <laughs> I would say that's more black and white thinking than the kind of person you are. Okay. Okay. Valid. Except that I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm just ignoring it too much. Ignoring the anger, ignoring the frustrations. It sounds pendulum-y instead of like balance grasshopper, you know? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I love that you just called me a grasshopper. <laughs> <laughs> You, you probably um, have an idea of what anger looks like, and you don't want to look like that. And so you're just like, nope. Mm. But I would encourage you, like, if you, when you heard me say, yeah, I'm not willing to take responsibility for your anger, sir. Mm. Like, that's not an ugly version. You probably liked that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, there are ways to express anger. Will you please stop doing the thing that you're doing? Because otherwise I'm not, I'm not going to want to be around you. Yeah. Like that's like trying to make the situation better. The yeah. expression of anger enters. It takes courage to enter into a conflict, particularly if you love that person. Yeah. The effort is trying to enhance the relationship so that you don't just clam up and bail. Yeah, for sure. I feel like uh, um, what I've done in the past um, is I've, I've apologized on behalf of people too much. So that's been, that's certainly been something that I've been working on. That'll um, piss you off pretty quick. Sorry? That kind of behavior will piss you off pretty quick. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Because I'm like, I can't apologize for you being a dick. <laughs> right, right. But may, I'm afraid of my anger, so I'm probably gonna or I'm gonna self medicate my fear with controlling behavior. Just, oh, apologize for this person. Apologize. That gives oh, sorry, me a sense okay. of control because I don't want to deal with my anger and be like, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Dick. Yeah. Or whatever matches your values to say. Like what? Mm. Talking. I write songs about it. That's my issue. <laughs> And I'm not telling you to do anything, you know, like I'm just talking, I'm just giving my opinion because we're shooting the shit, you know, like, no, I like it, you know? I like it, I like it.
That's cool. Talk Definitely about empowering. to think about. Sorry? Empowering. Talk yeah. about empowering. Like to know your emotions and know how to sort of flow with them and what to say with them that you know matches your values is really strengthening and fortifying. And if you're already a resilient person who's been mm. through some shit and then you get some like actual skills under your belt, no stopping you. Okay. Those okay. are my favorite. Those are my favorite people to work with. I call the gifted misfits because society calls us that. And so we're going to take that word back. And it's usually, you know, the energy you said you used to fight and suicide, you know, all that energy, my, my books about cutting, right? So self-harm, all the people that have. When I say fight, sorry, to, to clarify, when I say fight, I mean, like I used to learn Krav Maga. I wasn't actually like, oh, you're pissing me off here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. That is an important one. I'm not an angry bird. Well, maybe I am an angry person. I'm not a physically aggressive person. But it's not, it's not about what kind of person you are. It's how do, do you effectively or ineffectively manage said emotion. Right. But that's the thing. People are like, I'm going to deny that I feel angry because I don't want you to think I'm an angry person. Well. Yeah, that's weird. I feel, I, I've heard that a lot where people sort of, it's like you're, you're not your experiences right right you're not, not your feelings you're not your experiences you're somebody who experiences things and experiences feelings right and you make choices around those things and if you're not trained already to make effective choices that line up with your values you're probably going to do something that causes shame because mm. you're impulsive where the emotions in control instead of you and you're going to and then mm. you're going to behave in a way that doesn't match your values. And then you're going to feel shame. Right. And that sucks. And then you're going to stuff shame and it's going to cause anxiety. I mean, like that's a gross loop that everyone yeah. has done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got it. You got a handle on your emotional experience in a large part. You do. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, kind of, it's it's uh, it's just when things are upside down, and I, I guess my thing, like this is why I'm grateful. That I don't believe in regrets. I don't believe in because I think that everything that happens to us happens for us. Yeah, right. Yeah. And so being able to then take those shitty emotions and those shitty experiences and um the lessons that i've taken from them and then being able to apply them to something like COVID 19 totally totally um has been really beneficial for me um because i, I know that some people granted like some people have been coping far better than i have um but at the same time i think you know we all it's also there's also a fine line between like is it coping or is it avoiding is it activity <laughs> or Sorry. is it activity addiction yes yeah. which is distraction yeah yes that is a fine line as well but you know trauma and like shitty things happening i you know you wouldn't wish it on anybody but i always say flowers can grow from a cow pie my my old band i used to be in a hard rock band called static era and that was um the front cover of our of our um album was a uh, like concrete ground uh -huh. and a little tiny flower that had poked up like, like between concrete. the cobbles it's like i think the album was called dare to fail or something like nice fail spectacularly yes totally learn from it love it become friends with it yes and then grow great. from it Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, hell, yes. Yeah, I don't, what is it, the saying, like, I don't fail, I learn. I'm like, okay, go ahead. It is a really quick way to learn lessons. Yeah. 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 
to fast forward on lesson learning for sure. Like the more pain, quick and painful, you know, like light bulbs, light bulbs. <laughs> How painful is this lesson going to be then? <laughs> when are we going to learn that community definitely trumps money? Uh, I, know, I hope now. I'm really hoping now we're going to learn that. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see that um, the countries that are doing the best are all like run by women? I am butchering that stat and I'm terrible at stats, but I just think that's interesting too, because this collective community thing is needed and real and often associated with the feminine. Yeah, yeah. I posted about that on um, on my Facebook page and somebody came and was like, Oh God! He really, he got really angry about it and started uh, making all these comments about you can't make sexist remarks. Of where I'm like, <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Like, how? Okay, I'll just rewrite reality for you. Yeah, right. <laughs> for your convenience. Yes, yes. I'm sorry, dude. With your <laughs> Men are wonderful too. That's not of what course. I'm saying. Like, of course. Of course. It's not saying. about that. Yes, it's not about that. That you know, like I always am like put this in context of race instead of sexism. Like there are plenty of nice white people too. Yeah. But the fact <laughs> of the matter is right, right. Racism fucking exists. Right. Right. White supremacy, totally a thing. Yeah, no, really? No. So it's like, yeah, exceptions, but we can't have the fucking exceptions going. Not all white people. Mm. That doesn't help. God damn it. <laughs> I obviously have more to work out on that front, but like that. How about your feelings? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm angry. I'm frustrated. We are pretty hardcore, that kind of stuff. Yeah. It, it's funny on that note, because I, you know, like my, my experiences growing up in New Zealand were not, like New Zealand's just not nearly as exaggerated when it comes to racial um, disputes. Um, they exist, they're just not on the same plethora as, as the US, you know. Um, so I, moving here, First of all, the, the, the biggest eye opener was like, my mom used to always say to me growing up, like, you're black and you're beautiful. You're black and you're beautiful. I'm like, okay, mom, whatever. Didn't realize that there are legitimately communities that have been told their entire lives that being black is not beautiful. So like, it's, um, you know, I, my own understandings and learnings and experiences since living here have been incredible. I bet. So mind so, so eye-opening. So like just mind-boggling. Like, oh wow, like you're literally gonna gra grasp your purse closer because you think I can't afford your shit. <laughs> like, okay. Oh, you're literally going to like tell me that I need to listen to rap music because I'm brown. Okay. Oh, you think that I have a university, like a master's degree because of my accent. Okay. <laughs> and the way that I speak, you know? <laughs> like, I just, yeah. What do people, people think? Weird. It's people. this, this again, the what? Yeah. yeah, duck, what is it? Water for ducks and us. I heard it was you know, duck I, had, I had a kid say to me once, you do realize the phrase is water off a duck's back, right, JJ? I'm like, yeah so like i make shit up all the time why you're gonna latch on to that come on <laughs> it wouldn't be me if it wasn't duck's ass moving on <laughs> plus why are you a teenager and you're correcting swearing instead of <laughs> right I, I have a um I have a, a songwriting um i, I work with a, a young person uh we you know She's a young person, so she's got lots of emotions, lots of ideas and feelings and opinions. Um, and so I'm helping her like work through them through songwriting, um, cool. which has been fantastic. But like for the longest time, she's like, you know, it got to the point where she's like, Emma, um, 
can I can I say the F word in a song? I'm like, uh, the F word? What the fuck is an F word? You mean fruit? <laughs> like <laughs> fear? <laughs> What's the F word? She's like, right. oh, you mean we're allowed to swear? And I'm like, girl, please. <laughs> Are you an artist? Are you human? Like, I'm not the one that's gonna dictate your life. Right, um, exactly. And don't let anyone. Because. And you don't have to swear more to prove that you can either. Just find what's real for you and be you. I think that's been the most one of the most beautiful things that I've been able to experience during this coronavirus pandemic, like quarantine, is like actually having this time to spend with myself to get to know myself. Yeah. Yes. I, that, that is a core issue. I really think that that's why people are freaking out so hard because they don't know how to be with themselves because yeah. they don't, they weren't taught how to like themselves, like actively like themselves, not go buy a shirt that says self-love. Which like, I had just so actually, <laughs> <laughs> no, it says, it says love yourself. Yeah. Okay. There what? You go. <laughs> what? I mean, it's, I don't care if it's a shirt. I just want people to practice it. You know, a lot of people will wear the shirt instead of practicing it. Yeah. I mean, I live in the Bay area. Hello. You know, yeah. like toxic positivity and like spiritual materialism and all that shit. Like, let's get real. <laughs> You know, I'm not saying wear a shirt that says F you, I, you know, like, yes, love yourself, love everybody else. I just, there are ways to behave and there are ways to regulate your emotions so that you can behave according to your values. So it creates joy and self-esteem and self-confidence instead of shame and mm. eroded sense of self mm. and more anxiety. Mm. You know, there's like actual, there are behaviors you can engage in to build up liking yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And if and the I, whole world did that, be a different place altogether. So what are the, what are the top five action points that you feel that we could take into, into this week? Ooh, that's hard to boil down. Um, okay. Well, I'm, my mind goes to sort of like the highlights of the class that I teach and like, where do I start with people? Download Google emotion words and print Ooh. it out. Okay. And then do this thing and figure out, cause there are going to be ones on the list. Any list that you download and print out is going to have thoughts on it. Really? So, Yes. Attacked is going to be on there. And remember what I said about that, that yeah. makes an assumption about the other person. So you're definitely going to have ones that are thoughts, not feelings disrespected, you know, like, how do you know if someone respects you or doesn't respect you without asking them? Now yeah. you might think their behavior disrespects you. You're perfectly like entitled to that opinion. It just doesn't necessarily make it true for them. So yeah. there are all these sticking points. So emotion words, and then use to use them. How am I feeling right now? Ask yourself several times in a day, how am I feeling right now? And then if you don't know, go to the list and then just name it because that is validation and validation is the key to everything. Word word that's internal internal and, validation yes. Not external. Yeah. naming your yes instead yeah. of oh t uh, tell me i'm good enough uh, uh. no i feel fear i feel anger this is the beginning of building a system of internal validation where other people's in the environment their opinions don't matter because the inside voice is louder than anything else yeah. 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 Shine brighter. And I feel like one of the things about that inside voice is that when you, when you are fully listening to that and shining your brightest brightness, you know, it's not only going to let other people see that brightness and, and celebrate your brightness as well, but it's going to ignite their inner bright. Yes. It gives permission yeah. to find yours. Yeah. yeah. If 
if we all just are like openly the freaks that we are truly no one, <laughs> right like then freak ceases to be a negative word because we all have our weird bits and light and dark bits and if we accept ourselves all of it then it doesn't matter it doesn't matter we don't have to pretend for anyone anymore in my in my artist bio it says um like further down like flying her freak flag proudly yes. right and and i remember like sharing it with somebody and they're like why would you call yourself a freak or having a freak flag i'm like motherfucker yeah i am <laughs> that's right that's right that's right oh, you know. <laughs> totally people are like why i think people are going to be offended by the word misfits i'm like well it's in quotes a eh? and i don't really care because you don't, you don't get it then you i'm not calling people misfits i'm saying we are yeah this little group of freaks that makes up my f posse yeah that are teaching people emotion emotional intelligence yeah we're Freak. misfits gifted misfits yeah. we're happy to embrace that word what's that quote like the uh the greatest act of rebellion is to love yourself yes i say loving yourself is punk as fuck that's my version of it yeah this is why you're awesome um okay so we've got google uh google emotion words validate by using the emotion words cool um make a list of what your values are that's a really good one i do that with everybody that i've ever worked with be and and they're always like oh what is a value or whatever D don't don't put your critical thinking just put down what's important to you my mine you know like honesty generosity of self you know these kinds of things and some of them you know accountability is on my list that's mm -hmm. not gonna be on everybody's list you know the service service is on yeah. your list yeah. you know like make your own list and then make beside it what are the behaviors that you engage in on a regular basis that oh, wow. match your value like okay. then make the list of the behaviors you engage in regularly that do not match the values list so that you know what they are and you can start to eliminate them. That is totally a brutal sim like simplification. Oh, but totally. Yeah, yeah. No, okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. It's wow. you can use it though. That gets you out of the gates. No, I love that. Thank you, JJ. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're phenomenal. Anytime. Like this was great. <laughs> it was. I'm I'm so like <laughs> I'm feeling like both attacked and judged. I'm not feeling <laughs> that way. <laughs> no, no, and empowered. I mean, no, I'm feeling, uh, what's the actual feelings I'm feeling? I am feeling empowered um, and overwhelmed with the amount of inner work I still need to do. There well, we go. We all, ha it's never done. No, that's true. But we get into like new stratas of happiness and joy and calm and liking ourselves the more sort of skills we build i love it i yeah. love it cool yeah so my free shit is on thursdays people do ask questions and i answer them on ig live so nice and so where can people find you on ig live uh it's at dr jj kelly d-r-j-j-k-e-l-l-y -J -J -E on instagram and it's pst you guys it's Pacific yeah. Standard Time. Pacific Standard Time. Not Eastern Standard, not New Zealand time, not Fiji time. Right. 3 p.m. California time. Yeah. Which is 6 p.m. Eastern right. Standard Time. Yeah. You're a rock star. Thank you so much you? for being wonderful. <laughs> and um, I'm going to turn, I will quickly say um, Peter said that anger is a legitimate response to a boundary violation um he is agreeing with a whole bunch of stuff that you were <laughs> saying you see the question i think the question isn't is your way of being angry consistent with your values it's whether your permission to yourself hate to say the obvious hate to say the